Let's look at the 2023 Higher Admin and IT assignment. The first thing to do is to read carefully the assessment task. You really want to familiarise yourself with what the scenario is for the assignment and who you are, who you're working for and the types of tasks that you're going to be doing. So it talks here about being national flower shows, being promoters of flower shows and festivals in Scotland, Wales and England. It mentions admin and marketing assistance to organisers of local flower shows. Second paragraph talks about where you work and your line manager is Riley Duncan. It goes on to say that one of the clients is Fife Flower Festival, holding an annual flower show in St Andrews, um, 16th to 18th of June. Third paragraph talks about Riley going on holiday and that you are dealing with any requests from Fife Flower Festival and that includes dealing with exhibitor and customer inquiries, creating promotional material and financial reporting. So all clues as to what the tasks are going to be. There is a to-do list that you can tick off and I have actually brought across the um, a screenshot of the e-files that are in this particular assignment. Now without even looking at the question and Starting with the to-do list, I can see the first thing is going to be calculating wages. And as I look down my list of files on the right-hand side, the first one I see is a spreadsheet called employee wages. So I'm pretty sure that the first task is going to be a spreadsheet. So let's now go and have a look. So I've now opened up the employee wages spreadsheet and I've actually brought across the first question from the assignment. And to the right of that, I have a list from the SQA from the higher admin specification for spreadsheets that lists all the functions and formulas that you need to know. So all of these, you will be tested on one or more of these during the assignment. I would say before we look at the question in detail, I would spend a few moments just going through each worksheet one at a time just to see what's going on and what you think you're going to be asked to do. The first sheet there is the pay rates and I can see that there's a position, a pay code and a basic hourly rate in column C. Blank column D looking for some kind of percent to go in there, percent increase and E looking for a new hourly rate. So two things to do here. Moving on to the gross pay, a bit more detail with employees. It's now looking at the number of hours worked. There's a column for basic hourly rate, which if you think is probably going to have to come from this sheet. And then we've got some overtime with a comment, overtime pay, and then the gross pay in column J, which will be the total pay for each member of staff. And then the third sheet, is an analysis you'll see there of each department, looking at employee numbers and the pay for each department. Going back to the first one, to the pay rates, let's now decide what function we're going to have to use to complete column D. Now looking at the question, it talks about employee wages need to be prepared. Before these can be calculated, I need you to deal with a change to the current pay rates. And it talks about each position is to receive a pay rise based on the following criteria. Now, a slight red herring here is talking about each position. The criteria, if you look in the table below, is based on the hourly rate in column C. If they're paid £16 or more, they get 4.5% of an increase. If they get paid more than £13 per hour, 6.5% increase. If it's less than 13 is 8%. So in cell D3, we're starting with the equals if to get going, open bracket, the logical test, what are we evaluating? Well, it's the basic hourly rate in C3. And according to the table, if that rate is greater than or equal to 16, we don't need the pound sign, just the, the number, the value itself. If that is true, so with a comma, if that is true, I can see from the table, they're going to get 4.5% increase. With my comma, I'm not ready to finish. Remember, it's a nested if, so let's bring up the if again. This time, if the rate in C3, if that 
rate of pay is greater than £13, or just 13 and I can see again from the table in the question, then they're going to get a 6.5% pay rise. And if it's, if it's, if it's not, none of these, none of these two, um, otherwise they're going to get an 8% rise. The fact it's a nested if means that we've we've put two ifs in, so we have to close each one off. So we'll we'll do a closing bracket for the second of the two ifs, and then we'll finish off with the the, the closing bracket there, and click on enter, and then you'll see there for the first uh, person fourteen pounds um, basic hourly rate, they're going to get a six point five uh, percent increase, which is correct, and then we can just copy that down. So to get the new hourly rate, we're going to have to work out what is 6.5% of £14. So we can click on equals the percent increase times the basic hourly rate. Pop that in a wee bracket. So that will work out what the increase is going to be. And of course, we have to add the increase back onto the original basic hourly rate to get the new hourly rate. Click on enter go back up and then copy that down. Let's now complete column D again, this time using the IFS function. So in cell D3, let's type in equals IFS open bracket. I'm going to use the function argument box this time. So in formula, I'm going to go to insert function to bring up the box. And we'll start it in the same way as we did with the nested if. So we're looking at logical test one, C3 is to be greater than or equal to £16 per hour as per the table in the question. If that is true, we are returning a 4.5% in column D. Logical test two, back into C3, this time it must be greater than 13 or 13 pounds per hour if that is true value if true two we're going to type in 6.5 percent and the difference is with a nested if we kind of then go otherwise it must be eight percent we just have to go into logical test three and go back again same c3 this time is to be um less than or equal to 13. Now, I can't see value of true 3. There's not a box here. Just click on the tab key to bring up the extra row. And if that is true, they're going to get an 8% rise. Now, if you look up on the formula bar and the difference between the nested if and the ifs function is that we only need to open the bracket once at the beginning and close it at the end. But we just have to put the extra bit in at the end, the C3 less than is the wee additional bit. So it really just depends how you've been taught, what you prefer, but it will give you the same result. So that is another way of completing column D using the complex if function.